Hi everyone, my name is Ben Lazier. I'm a PGY1 emergency medicine resident at West Virginia University. And I'm Clara Kraft, an ultrasound fellow here at West Virginia University. We'd like to share an interesting case with you from our emergency department. Recently, a boy presented to our emergency department with a post-mnemonic pulmonary abscess, which was detected in minutes using bedside ultrasound. We'd like to report on this case with a relatively rare but clinically serious complication of pneumonia and describe the utility of bedside ultrasound in its diagnosis. In this case, diagnosis was made rapidly with bedside ultrasound in minutes prior to a chest x-ray being obtained. We'll talk about the case, go over some images obtained, discuss the imaging technique, ultrasound diagnosis of pulmonary abscess, and talk a little bit more about the utility of point-of-care ultrasound. An eight-year-old boy with a history of pneumonia treated appropriately with antibiotics at an outside facility presented to the emergency department for weakness and persistent fevers and night sweats. He was non-toxic appearing with age-appropriate behavior and vital signs. Physical exam was remarkable for decreased breath sounds on the left side. A bedside ultrasound of the heart appeared normal, while an ultrasound of the lung demonstrated a well-demarcated capsular structure measuring 5 by 6.5 centimeters surrounding a hypoechoic core consistent with a pulmonary abscess. Labs were significant for an elevated white count of 19.7, ESR 73, CRP 106.9, and initial chest x-ray showed a large round area of consolidation in the left lung. The initial report noted concern for a possible round pneumonia with surrounding pleural effusion. Pediatrics and surgery were consulted and CT imaging was performed which redemonstrated and further characterized the newly diagnosed pulmonary abscess. The patient was admitted to pediatric service with a surgical consult for drainage of a large stage 2 post-pneumonic pulmonary abscess and decortication of the left lung. The patient did well postoperatively, received antibiotic therapy, and had an uncomplicated postoperative course. Bacterial culture of the abscess grew Fusobacterium nucleatum. He was discharged one week after admission. So Ben, how do you like to go about getting your images for the lung ultrasound in this case? Well, the placement of the probe is really key to obtaining good images in lung ultrasound. Whatever nomenclature you do use, just make sure it's something that is standardized at your institution. For our lung zones, we have the lungs divided up into six sections, which you can see in the image on the screen. We have one, two on the anterior side, three and four kind of in the mid-axillary line, and five and six corresponding to one and two on the posterior side of the chest, and each one is present on the right and the left lung. So long as you keep the probe with the indicator facing upward and sweep through the entirety of each lung zone, you should obtain pretty good images of the entirety of the lungs. Would you like to talk a little bit about probe selection, Clara? Sure. Generally, when looking at lungs, if you're looking for something like a pneumothorax, you can use a higher frequency probe. But in the case when you're trying to look for deeper structures like the pulmonary abscess or pleural effusions, you can use a probe with a lower frequency, which gives you increased penetration, meaning better views at increased depth. So for this, you can use a transducer with a wide footprint and a low frequency, and so you can use either our curvilinear, like what you use for the abdomen, uh, or you can use one of the uh, linear transducers. Any one can work, though, whatever you have on hand. You can adjust the depth to visualize the deep lung tissue. So one thing I'd like to mention is that visualization of your landmarks this is going to be really important for lung ultrasound. You're going to want to make sure the depth is appropriate to try to view as much lung tissue as you can, although you're going to want to recognize that based on the nature of ultrasound beams going through air, you're going to lose some of the deeper aspects of the lung parenchyma. That's the reason we image the anterior and the posterior aspects of the chest. In terms of landmarks, you're going to have ribs in the superficial aspect of the image, with the corresponding rib spaces providing the majority of your acoustic windows. The rib shadows are going to go down from below the ribs 
and you're going to want to make sure you obtain images of the entirety of the diaphragms in the lower lung zones and up into the apices in the upper lung zones as well. Yeah, that's right. And I'd say a depth of about 12 is probably a good depth around there, 10 to 14 or so. With a smaller kid, you could use less depth potentially than that. And then another little word on some of the presets. I like to use the same preset that we use for the FAST exam. Presets are just gain, depth, and uh, frequencies that are set to your particular probe selection that help you get the most optimal imaging. One thing that I would add about your lung zones and obtaining thorough images of the lungs. While we do want to look in all the lung zones, the lung ultrasound is actually one where you don't use the sweeping technique that you do typically when looking through the abdomen. You want to hold your probe steady and allow the patient's breathing to do the work of movement to let you see the images that you want to capture. Okay, so here we have a video clip showing some normal looking lung. Here is the skin and subcutaneous tissue. Here's a rib. Here's a rib. Each of those have rib shadows going down. And you see this bright white line here. That's the pleural line. And you can notice that as the patient moves, that line sort of shimmers. And that's an example of normal lung slide and fairly normal lung tissue here. You can see this brighter line that appears here. That's known as an A line and is also part of normal lung tissue. Okay, here's another clip starting out with a rib, a rib, and the pleural line in between. And this is where things start to get a little abnormal. Do you see right there, there's a little wedge-shaped area that comes into view along that pleural line. And that's a little bit of a focal consolidation in that area. So that wedge has some bright white or hyperechoic lines coming off of it, B lines coming off of it. And the pleura just doesn't have that nice, clean, white, clear striped appearance in that area. There's a bit darker and kind of raggedy edge with that wedge shape that goes along with the consolidation. So, this video here is the start of where we moved into the left lung, and this is where a lot more pathology is shown. To orient you, here's one rib, here's another rib, this is the intercostal space here, and the first thing you'll notice is that the pleural line has a dark stripe above it. This hypoechoic area is a pleural effusion. The parietal pleura is this thin line here, the visceral pleura is here, and in between those two, the pleural space is filled with some fluid. You'll also notice that the visceral pleural line here is kind of chunkier to throw an adjective at it. It's a bit irregular, and there's a lot of hyperechoic signal tracing down a lot of B lines around it, and the lung tissue here has a few spots above it, but is hyperechoic throughout in this area. That's all consistent with consolidation and a surrounding fluid collection here. Well, things are looking pretty abnormal in this image here. So I see you've switched back to the curvilinear on this image. And again, we have a bit of that pleural line up here, the hypoechoic effusion along here. And we're starting to see much more of this hypoechoic region here. And up against it, there's more bright white hyperechoic area consistent with consolidation. You can see as the patient is breathing that uh, you see a little bit of a change in these bright hyperechoic areas here going along with air bronchograms, which is a sign of consolidation in the lung tissue. And I think we have some more images, a little bit more detail about this area here coming up next. So this video here really well characterizes the abscess itself. 
this video is taken just slightly more superior than the previous one. You saw the abscess start to come into view in the previous video. This one I just slid a little more up into the armpit of the patient. In this video, you see kind of up in the apex of the lung a large mass here with a hyperechoic capsule surrounding a hypoechoic fluid pocket within. The hyperechoic capsule is hyperechoic in comparison to normal lung tissue, kind of isoechoic in comparison really to the consolidated lung tissue which surrounds this. You see a little bit more of that pleural effusion and a really nice, especially right in this kind of frame here, hypoechoic fluid pocket within. Okay, here we have another image. This is a little further down in the L4 region. Here is the diaphragm right along here. This here is spleen. And you can see here the lung tissue again has the bright hyperechoic speckles through it consistent with consolidation. All right, in this video, we have put color flow up around the abscess to demonstrate some of the increased vessel signal in the pericavity consolidation area. Here you can see some flow through vessels in the surrounding area and you should be able to tell that there is no flow in the fluid within the abscess itself. In the video we've got here we do have a good amount of motion artifact we could have improved upon this by decreasing the gain on the color flow, but you'll notice that it is low velocity and uh, bi-directional, consistent with the cardiac and respiratory motion. Like I said, we could have improved on this video a little bit when we got it. Another thing of note, the use of Doppler showing the vessels in the pericavity consolidation is a nice technique to help look at lung abscesses, it's been shown to be useful and specific for evaluating lung abscesses. Okay, so now that we've kind of gone through everything, why should we care about this case, Clara? Well, while it's rare, pulmonary abscess is a potentially serious complication of pneumonia, and it's a diagnosis to keep in mind if you have a child with persistent fevers and pneumonia symptoms. Typically, these kids have had fevers for several weeks, night sweats, those sorts of symptoms. X-ray is typically the initial diagnostic modality used in the workup, but it often doesn't demonstrate the pulmonary abscess well, and additional diagnostic techniques are often needed. This case demonstrates that diagnosis with point-of-care ultrasound can be done rapidly. In this case, it was done before a chest x-ray was even performed, allowing for appropriate treatment and disposition to be made earlier. In pediatrics, it's important because you may be able to avoid ionizing radiation such as a CT scan by utilizing ultrasound and still be able to get a good characterization of the fluid collection. And we hope that after seeing this, if you run across a pulmonary, ultra, a pulmonary abscess while you're ultrasounding, you'll recognize what you're seeing. Another thing that's important is that in addition to being a useful tool for rapid diagnosis of lung abscess, bedside lung ultrasound has additional utility for procedural guidance for treatment of the pulmonary abscess. Chest tube drainage of lung abscess is a definitive treatment for the majority of cases of pulmonary abscess. Most don't actually require surgical resection and percutaneous chest tube drainage of the lung abscess is optimally performed under radiographic guidance to ensure optimal placement and to reduce complications. Ultrasound is something that can certainly be used to guide your treatment, guide your placement of your chest tube. You can use it to help mark out the location to place your tube. And it has the benefit over CT scan of avoiding the radiation during that intervention. The last thing we want to bring your attention to in this case is the chest x-ray. Keep in mind that the diagnosis had already been made by point-of-care ultrasound at this time in the patient's course. You can see here that while the x-ray shows left lung consolidation, it could have easily been missed 
diagnosed as a recurrent pneumonia, which would have led to inappropriate treatment. 